Greetings everyone, my name is Flair Blitz and welcome back to Cafe Space Angel with the bulletin boards always pointing out something of a self-emotion there. There was a dead alive emptiness in my head. Every fragment of a memory was instantly dissolving there. What time is it? I shivered from the cold and with a numb hand I searched my pocket for the smartphone. That's weird. I felt giddy and nauseous. I can't feel my left hand. Where am I? I had a strange feeling as if I was moving, but remained motionless. Just like in a car. I made an effort to open my eyes and blink several times. The image of the real world around me gradually began to clear up. Mm hmm. The feeling did not fail me. I really and truly was in the b. Ooh. Well, hi there. Other people, what the. I gave a ruckus shout, but quickly recovered and shut it in my mouth. Where the world are those monsters? What are those ghouls? It's looking straight into my eyes. What did I get myself into? I don't remember. Can't remember. I can't remember anything from the past few minutes. I stole a glance at unknown black entities one more time and instinctively flattened myself against the seat. They absolutely take no notice of me. Did they hear the shout? Maybe I'm just having a nightmare. We were moving very slowly as if we were floating through the mysterious depths of the ocean. In fact, as it seemed to me, we were heading out of the city. Then, it's no wonder that the sky is full of stars. Too beautiful to be a simple nightmare. I breathed a doomed sigh. And still... If it is a transit bus, it is not wise for us to drive at a stop in the middle of the road. An advertisement for some cafe was repeated on TV to which the bus was apparently heading. Did we get on the wrong bus? Cafe Space Angel. It's almost as if we're heading towards the destination that is the name of the game. Terror. Tyra? What on earth is this? Self-promotion, that's what I call it. It would be better to show a detailed route instead of repeating the same thing. Advertising is getting the message into your mind. Even though it may not be a brilliant thing to consider, it is something that you remember because of repetition. Everything was so unreal that it was more like a dream. But I still could not get rid of the tension and desire to understand the situation. The bus suddenly stopped, interrupting my thought. Did you not see the outside? We're in space! The bus suddenly stopped, interrupting my thoughts. When the doors opened, another pair of the same clumps of black matter entered inside. The door shut as abruptly as they had opened, as if they didn't want to let me out. I looked at the newly arrived passengers. Is there something wrong with my eyes? If they really wanted to, they would have done something bad to me long ago, wouldn't they? Exactly. Don't be scared by our lovely uh, co-passengers. <laughs> Creep slowly sat down on the seats as if slightly levitated over them. I decided to behave as inconspicuous as possible for fear of attracting the attention of unknown creatures. I continued to calm myself, but panic was growing. Maybe we're the unknown creatures to these black entities. No way. I'll wait a bit. And as soon as the bus stops again, I'll get off. It does not really matter whether it is a reality or a dream. I do not want to stay with the creeps any longer. I do not have any idea how much time has passed. A second, a month, an eternity, but the bus continued to move through space. It moved straight forward without ever turning. Nope, 
In space, you don't need a steering wheel. As soon as I began to feel an overwhelming fear once again, I heard a pretty female voice. Welcome to Cafe Space Angel, dear customers. Please take a table and wait for the waitress. For express service, please go to the front desk. Judging by the voice, the speaker is a girl, but before she could finish her speech, the creep stood up and headed for the exit. We are truly grateful to you for choosing Terrorbus as your service provider. Have a great day and enjoy your meal. What should I do? Should I get off the bus or stay here? This is probably a bus terminal. Moreover, the voice was cheerful and obviously belonged to a human being. Maybe I should take a look around or find someone. Who will tell me what on earth is going on here? I've tried to blend into the crowd as much as possible and went through the furthest exit from the driver so as not to get a fine for a free ride. Whew. That went well. As well as it can. I squeamishly brushed off black smoke. The creeps marched toward the only building at the crossing like moths to a light. A lot of moth memes, I must say so myself, entering my mind. Why are they so formless? Just like your ideals in life, dear protagonist. They don't have any form. Oh, no. After I left the bus, I suddenly lost my fiend of safety and found myself in the outer space. Wait, outer space? I could easily breathe and even stood firm on the ground, but my legs gave way to the unpleasant feeling of some kind of vulnerability. Too much philosophy going on here, dear protagonist. Just keep on going. It was much more convenient and calm inside the cabin along the familiar seats and handrails. Why did I come out? I looked around convulsively in search of the already dearly beloved bus, but right before my eyes it darted away with a speed of a bullet. What the hell? Didn't it move at a snail's pace? Damn it. Well, because you're off the bus, sorry, the bus, the bus can go considerably lighter. It can only hold phantoms after all. I swallowed hard. Everything around seemed very quiet and calm as if no one cares about me. Nobody knows of my existence here. This suspicious place looks like an ordinary ice cream parlor. The word ordinary sticks out. It's a contrary word to what it is. Cafe Space Angel. How much did you pay for your ad? Nothing. I hope this place isn't that expensive. I'll just go in and ask for a call. Or at least find out where I am. You're dead, that's what you are. This is the afterlife. You have come here to find a job, and once you have found the job, and done at least 50 years in the afterlife, then you can pass on to the next stage of life. I heard a noise somewhere around the garbage cans. Cats? Or another kind of creep? Crep. No, I can't stay here any longer. I made my way to the front door with a quick but uncertain step. Sink or swim. Bright light. I've not seen that in about three months. Oh, it felt like forever anyways. From the inside, the cafe looks quite futuristic, though ordinary. At least it seems to be simple high-tech tables and chairs. Some familiar melody is playing on the background. If the customers here are strange black messes, I wouldn't be surprised if the waiters are androids. You couldn't be further from the truth than you are, my friend. Nevertheless, it is cozier here than I thought. But somehow it is too bright. Like a child who fell for advertising, I began to inspect the room in search for a girl who spoke in a megaphone. All the creeps sat peacefully at tables, as if, so as in the bus, one by one. No crying children or noisy birthdays. Hmm, I like this place. <laughs> I smiled ironically. 
Those creeps that came with me quickly sat down on the empty seats. I'll just ignore them. Looking around for just a few seconds, I followed the Gregorous instinct and sat down at the first table that I found in order to not attract too much attention to my person. The place I've chosen was nothing to shout about as far from the exit. I could only I could see only half of the dining room and the counter. Even though I just came in to ask, my stomach was treacherously growling. I hope it's affordable here. I automatically searched my pocket to get my wallet and check for money. You don't have any money, do you? Okay, I'll just ask to make a call. Unless the same monster didn't come up to me now. While I was trying to think, ah, oh, the waiter blinks. That's quite cute. I don't know, but a very pretty human girl approached my table. She seemed to be exercised about something, as if she is looking at the guy she loves. Okay. Oh. Her chest was heaving, her lips were tightened, and there were fear and embarrassment in her glance. Of course, she did not love me, but something in her behavior seemed strange. She was obviously too tense. Are those halos around your hair? Maybe the first day at work? Nevertheless, she was the first to break the awkward silence that aroused between us. Excuse me? My heart was pounding and my brain resolutely refused to think. Okay. Welcome to the Cafe Space Angel, dear customer. Aww. That's a lovely way to introduce a customer here. <laughs> Aww. I like this place already. Oh, for, what, what was that? The girl bowed, humbled and embarrassed as if, she, if I, as if I was talking to her as my wife. Ah. Um, oh, a pretty little thing. I take back what I said about monsters. The waitress is an absolute angel. Cafe space angel. Are you alright? What a lovely voice she has. Not squeaky and not fake, but smooth and soft. Just like the girl of my dreams. Um, I think my half <laughs> open mouth was watering. I love the little tilt of the hair that's really well done. Excuse me? Did you say something? Uh, uh, nothing. I felt terribly embarrassed and cast it down my eyes. S sorry. There you go. She thinks I'm an idiot. Waitress noticed that I did not dare to make the order for a long time and decided to take the initiative. Dear customer, you are lucky to get our today's special beverage, the Lighthouse in the Arms of Morpheus. Hardly an alcoholic beverage, right? I'm not the kind of a dessert man and it probably costs a lot. You know, I have to pass. Could you please come a little later? Damn, I should have just asked for water. The girl looked at me intently, but then she opened her mouth as if having understood something. Oh, do not worry. You do not need to pay. But is this really a dream? <laughs> when how would you get money then if you don't if you don't get paid? If if what you serve you don't if you don't charge for Okay. Is this really a dream? I'm sad and happy at the same time. I feel guilty, but at the same time, how could I resist? Free food. What a strange feeling. Hmm. I cleared my throat a little and tried to sound confident. I once read about lucid dreams. It is enough to feel sure of yourself and then everything around you will be transformed at your desire. Really? Then I'll give it a try. Ah. It looks like I only agreed because it's free. What an idiot. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Just a minute, please. The waitress smiled calmly and moved quickly to another table. I continued to follow her with my eyes as if I didn't want to be left alone. Whoa. Whee. Whoopee. She seems so familiar. Like Erica. Funny hairstyle. Good shape. Nice reassuring voice. I think I might have seen her somewhere in reality. 
but I can't remember. Apparently, having felt my studying glance, she turned around short. So embarrassing. Sad, but this is only a dream. Are you sure? My thoughts were interrupted by... Oh my gosh, the dream crashing. By someone's gaze. It was so unpleasant that it gave goosebumps all over my body. Hmm. Ouch. I was trying to catch my breath, but there was a lump in my chest. What the hell was that? I got so numb. Bonk. Oh, I took a look around the cafe again. It looked as if nothing had happened. Was it just a feeling? While I was lost in my thoughts, the sweet and apparently only waitress in this cafe returned with my order. Your beverage of the day, dear customer. Ah, Thank you. She carefully placed a glass in front of me. Um, can I have a straw? You forgot. The waitress looked at me in surprise. I probably shouldn't have empathized that she'd forgotten it. They don't have straws in this universe. A straw? Exactly! <laughs> they don't have straws in this universe! What for? What's that supposed to mean? What beverage is this? Without a straw? I frowned. Hmm. There's nothing. Nothing's wrong with her at all. Don't tell me she's a... No! <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't be like that. I'm not saying those words. But, but the beverage is not determined by the presence of a straw. The beverage is determined by placing the substance in the glass. <laughs> The glass contains the beverage. The straw is used as an instrument to deliver the tastes of the beverage to the customer. To the taster. What in the world are these strange memorized phrases? There's two different... Oh, I thought she was slightly looking to her right and then looking our way. It's not like that at all. I have to give praise where it's due. Like, these animations are really crisp. The waitress recovered herself in hand, hand her head. I am sorry to say this, but there are no straws in our cafe. The cafe, which makes a speciality out of beverages, does not have straws? Nonsense! She looked around in confusion, not knowing what to do. So... Alright. Never mind. Wait a minute. Please. She seemed to have had some eureka moment and quickly went to the counter. So they actually have straws? The waitress returned as quickly as she had left. With a spoon in hand. Like I said, there are no straws in our cafe. But we have spoons. Take it, please. She stood in front of me, confused, not knowing how to give me the spoon, clutching it in her hand. I think it's because all these customers are ghosts. That's why they don't have, um, straws or spoons for them. So, somehow they got spoons though. I went numb, unable to say anything, completely lost in the situation. Um, pardon me. The waitress put the spoon on the table next to the glass. Thanks. I finally thanked her, even for such a strange and useless act. She continued to stand, clasping the edge of the tray. Does she have something to say? Or was it my request that caused her program to crash? Aww. Um... I really don't have to pay, do I? Oh, do not say that! Would you like to hear the story of this beverage? Did I come on some holiday? <laughs> Does the beverage have its own story? Yes, if you want. Other customers like it, I guess. She smiled heartily, preventing my sarcastic thoughts. Sure, tell me all about it. 
Ah, I turned to the wall in embarrassment, still side glancing at the waitress. Ah, the waitress took a deep breath and began her story. But Beverly just called the lighthouse in the arms of Morpheus because the lighthouse keeper came up with an idea of it. That's understandable. Morpheus is probably a keeper of the lighthouse. And in the arms of Morpheus was how the beverage was created. Or the arms itself is just like a phrase used about the lighthouse. Because the lighthouse keeper came up with an idea of it. The lighthouse is a tall tower with a signaling light at the very top of it. This lighthouse is needed so that ships can safely navigate the sea. Can you imagine something like that? Of course I can. I even went to sorry, I went even went on a field trip to the Yokohama Marine Tower in high school once. Even though it's not a real lighthouse anymore. But why just looked admirably at me as if I had said that I was on the moon. So once upon a time, pirates, reckless sea folks, approached the lighthouse and decided to occupy it in order to trap merchant ships. Why does she explain obvious things? Even children know who the pirates are. Everyone knows who the pirates are. The lighthouse keeper was all alone, but he was not at a loss and defeated all the pirates. Looks very determined there. That's interesting. He barricades and defends himself? What? No way. What's wrong? My guess is quite logical. The lighthouse keeper came up with an awesome beverage. So... The pirates were convinced by the beverage. So the story is really about a beverage. When the bandits crashed in, exhausted from first, they found nothing but these wonderful drinks that the lighthouse keeper left. They looked really good and none of the bandits could not help but taste them. And the magic beverage turned them into good and honest people. <laughs> oh my gosh, the waitress looks so surprised. Dumbfounded, more like. I laughed in my sleeve. No. There were sleeping pills in the beverage, and then the lighthouse keeper called the police, and all the pirates were sent to jail. So, somehow the lighthouse keeper knew about the pirates. Well, maybe probably because of the lighthouse itself. I've got it. This is total rubbish. <laughs> I dream complete nonsense. So, the end of the story came out a little rushed. She looked puzzled as if she was considering my version of the story. So, enjoy your beverage, please. We just gave a slight bow and left to take orders from other customers. I feel extremely stupid. It turns out my IQ was up to minus 10 from zero. I glanced at the spoon the waitress had brought me with such pride. I've got the solution to your straw problem. Let me give you a spoon. What should I do with it? How do they even eat here? I looked at the customers of a cafe who were, what the hell, swallowing beverages with a glass. Oh my God, the reality is actually breaking. Look at the ceiling. Oh my goodness, I wish I hadn't seen it. What an idiotic dream. Ooh, I looked at the beverage. We looked more like a food model on display than a real one. Hey now, stop it. Bon appetit. I hope there are no sleeping pillars there, otherwise I would fall asleep in a dream and this will be only inception. I scooped up some whipping cream and syrup and ate it. Mm, wow. How come it's so... Oh, tasteless. It is neither sweet nor sour, not even bitter. I cannot say that the taste is good because this beverage simply has no taste at all. It is nothing. I have never paid attention before, but I really... I do really feel a taste of food in my dreams. So I was truly disappointed. I don't want to offend a nice waitress, so I'm going to eat up. With a hopeless look on the face, 
I finished eating my beverage with a spoon like a soup. The feeling of hunger took a second place, allowing me to relax a little. And what should I do now? I looked around the cafe once again to call the waitress, but she was busy. And still, it is really not. It is really quite nice here, even though I don't like that kind of style. I will not dissemble, but these creeps absolutely stand out of this peaceful atmosphere. Maybe each of these what you would call creeps are a part of your own imagination your own cells in your brain that contains the memories of awful things not that they were kicking up a row but they looked pretty scary and out of place the girl did not pay any attention to it talked to them as ordinary people she's so brave more like this is the norm of this universe the universe inside your head. Maybe this isn't actually inside the protagonist's head. He's, he literally just got transported here. I couldn't help but smile. Great. It is time to take the dream under control. That's what I thought about at the time. Naive. Foolish. A little bit childish. However, at the time, I thought I was the Lord, the King. And the master, the one who fully controls and manages the dream. I wish it was just a dream, but it was not. To be continued. Aww. Well, <laughs> that was so good. I really was impressed by the way the developers managed to program the animation of the waitress there where she was blinking and then looking at different parts. Not a different part. Uh -huh. Oh look, Cosmo Connections! Vitar Games. That's another good visual novel that's come out. Thank you very much for reading the first part of a Cafe Space Angel, dear customer. Wait, am I a customer? Although this is just the introduction to a big story, we kindly hope that it was interesting to you. It was thoroughly interesting to me. Looking forward to seeing what comes next, because it feels like it's ended off with a bit of a cliffhanger, which is good for excitement in the community. After reading it, you probably have a lot of questions left. What should I do? Unfortunately, I cannot give you answers yet. But do not worry. The second part will be released this year and will answer all your questions. Um, I, I have a question. How do you do your hair like that? How do I... <laughs> how do I become a waitress at this lovely cafe? It will include new characters and meaningful choices and will be much longer than the first part. Ah, the second part will be free as well. If you like our story and want to follow the development news, please subscribe to our Twitter. Click the follow button on their page. And while you're at it as well, give this video a thumbs up, a comment, and obviously subscribe as well, please. We also have a Discord server. And I am there too. What, 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 this waitress is there too? What the heck? What am I missing out on? All the links you can find at the bottom of the Etchio page. So please visit us. We are always happy to welcome new customers. And boot out all the unhappy ones. Thank you for reading. Nah. So I'm, I am imagining that the new characters are the characters that we see in front of us. That's not the waitress with the blue hair. The, uh, the other character with the tie on and the long white hair girl is of a um, likely new character. Sorry, I just went off a tangent there. Of a likely new characters in part two. So that was quite invigorating. Uh, yeah, what can we say about the protagonist's mother? She is, I would say, very profiting has a very profiting mindset like kind of like the family comes second her money comes first sort of thing whatever gets her the most profits is what she's inspired by rather than 
what's the best for my child, what's the best for my husband slash ex-husband, that sort of thing. But thank you so much for watching guys, you can check out this game, there is a link in the description below where you can download the game for yourselves, like the waitress said, it is absolutely for free, so there is nothing of monetary uh, costs for you to put, put, put to uh, actually play the game itself, but even though, if this was a paid game, I would pay for it, I would most certainly pay for it, it has the quality there, and it's only as quality like other visual novel games don't have in which you'd have to pay for. But thank you all so much for watching. This has been the first part of Cafe Space Angel. We'll see each other in part two. Or for me, part three, because this is a Let's Play series. Thank you all so much for watching and take care of yourselves.